All right, it's all done. I always do this before the videos, usually, <laughs> to let everyone know the difficulty, the tools I used, all that other stuff. First thing is oil and cleaner. That's what I use. You don't have to use this. I recommend it, but oil and cleaner you're going to need because you're going to be taking this gun down completely. While you have the gun apart, it's always smart to remove stuff that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> So if there's dirt or fouling or carbon buildup or anything, now is the time to get it apart if you're doing something similar to this. The only tools I used during the whole installation were this punch. It's a little guy. It's a 1 16th or a 1.5 millimeter. Very, very fine punch. That helped me get the lanyard loop out and some of the other pins. It also helped me fish around with the... Um, trigger return spring. I use this Allen wrench to get the grips off. I have no idea what size it is. I will say this again later. I bought a giant craftsman tool set like every man should and this is what came in it. I have no idea. I've also acquired other um, Allen wrenches over time so I don't know what size this is. My recommendation is get a giant Allen wrench set, dump out a bunch, and figure out what works. If you're more OCD and you have them all by size, start with a smaller one. I also always, anytime I do anything with a gun that's clean it, work on it, anything, I use my Leatherman Mutt. This thing has been absolutely priceless. I also have this brass scraper which is the most used tool on this thing this this right here is awesome you can tell I use it all the time there's marks all over it this is very very important so if you don't have one of these yet and you do a lot of work on your guns I highly recommend it there's definitely workarounds with other tools but to have this with you is priceless I also use these pliers that I got for the TRS install on the USP45, you can find them at HK Parts. I have no idea what they cost, and I'm not trying to pimp their stuff, but this is a very, very important tool, and it works. Now with that out of the way, how do I feel about the parts now that they're in there? I feel like the action's a touch smoother, but nothing crazy. Uh, definitely sounds different and you'll notice that the guide rod is more recessed and you can tell it is the Wilson but it's very very smooth I think the best part of this whole thing as much as I love this elite hammer I think it it feels right I like how it's designed and the spurs where they are and everything and it does look cool but this trigger is really Anybody with a Beretta, you should probably put this trigger in there. It it changes the shape of the trigger, so you get uh, a better read and feel on it. Also, you, it, it kind of smoothens out your application of force, and in single action, it feels like it's clearly not straight, okay? It is absolutely clearly not a straight trigger but it feels like a straight trigger when you apply force on it. Like it just, I don't know how to explain it, but when you put your finger in the right spot and pull it back, it feels like a straight trigger being pulled straight to the rear. That trigger is where it's at. If you do nothing else and just do the trigger, I think it will improve um, your overall feel of your Beretta. The other stuff, I don't know how I feel about it yet. The recoil buffer, I don't even know if that's going to do anything for me personally. The next step is to take it out and shoot it. Taking it out and shooting it is going to be the deciding factor of do I do more stuff to it. The only other things that I will do short term are the magazine release and the grips. I haven't made the determination whether I'm going to do the slimline grips or the standard thickness. I think standard thickness is fine, but if I can, I don't know, make it feel better in your hand, I don't know. This gun works fine for me. I don't need to tinker too much. So just those two items, and then maybe down the line, maybe, 
I might get a compact threaded barrel and run that just because it would be cool to have a suppressed Centurion, I think. But I don't know. This gun is probably about 90% complete, save the grips and the magazine release. That's really all I'm interested in doing. Outside of that, I'm just going to look forward to shooting it. So the total was $20 for the Beretta Hammer. And with all these parts, other than the fact that I ordered two of the buffers just in case it breaks and I like it, was $95.20. So plus $20 is $115.20. So this is now the $515 gun. If I want to go a little cheaper, I found some VZ grips for this that are on sale. They're black and white. And I'm not sure if I want to go that gaudy, but they're 50 bucks. And then this, I'm pretty sure, is 50 bucks from Wilson as well. So that's another $100. So I'll be in at $600 if I do it that way. Or I can go $75 and get the better grip. So that'll put me right at my budget of $625. We'll see. I have some thinking to do. And maybe some VZ grips to feel. I felt the Wilson Combat VZ grips, but I haven't felt the aggressive ones. I know there's some guys out there with the aggressive golf ball style grips so if you can roger up and let me know how they are. I don't need something that's gonna tear my hands up but I don't have like soft you know <laughs> baby hands either. I think the Wilson Combat grips are what's gonna go on here. I really don't want the Wilson Combat emblem on here because I don't want people to think that it was sent to Wilson. We'll see. I don't know. I might just get them and put them on there, who cares. All right, so on a difficulty scale, I put this somewhere in the moderate area. It wasn't terrible, but I do have experience. I am an apprentice gunsmith. I probably will forever be the student and never the teacher. But not hyper difficult. On a one being the easiest, five being the most difficult I've ever done, it's probably a three. Only because the small springs have to go perfectly in the holes and be perfectly oriented before they even get going. So it's kind of frustrating at times. There's also a few little you got to know how it goes together kind of deal. But I, put it, I took it apart once, put it back together right once. Not a very big deal at all. And there was no hand fitting or polishing or any any of that stuff required so I don't want to say it's super difficult. Next I'm just going to take it to the range and run it and see how I like the parts. After that I'll probably put the rest of the parts on it and then just start buying mags and ammo for it and call it a day. Or I might throw a threaded barrel on it like I said and run a suppress because a suppressed Centurion would be interesting. I haven't seen one before. I haven't seen too many Centurions either so. But Enjoy the video uh, coming up if you want to see my trials and tribulations. There are definitely better videos out there of how to take it apart and put it back together. So I'll annotate those in the description below to save you all some headache. And I think that's it. Enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Take care of each other. Stay safe and support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. All right. So it's time to start installing some parts here. What we're going to install today after I lubricate everything is the recoil system that I'm going to hopefully enjoy. <laughs> trigger, trigger return spring of Wilson Combat Manufacture, the 14 pound hammer spring and then I bought another one of these just in case I like it. As well as a Beretta hammer, which the packaging's right side up, but the hammer's upside down. So that's what we're going to be putting in there. Super excited. What I'm going to do is extract this out of the... I don't even know. <laughs> and get started. What I'm going to do is shut the camera off. I'm going to strip the gun down, do the upper parts. It's going to take 15 seconds. And then start the takedown on this. I'm going to oil all the parts before I put them in lightly just like the Mark 25 and the USP 45. I think that's a smart course of action since they're all moving parts and the only one that I may not uh, oil too hard is the hammer spring. I might just put that in as is but we'll see. 
probably very lightly oil it just to prevent any rust because there's moisture in the air. Also, I'm probably going to have to detail clean the gun at some point, so I'm going to shut it off for that. So it's going to be kind of a choppy video, but let's get to it. Oh man, what happened? First of all, my recommendation is when you take these off, leave the screws in the grips. I didn't lose them. That's just smart. And this is the Allen wrench I used. I literally have absolutely no idea what size it is. I have a bag of Allen wrenches that I got in a giant toolkit that every man should have. <laughs> All right, this is the easiest part of the entire install. Ready? Bam. Now I've pre-installed the recoil buffer. And as you can see, the there's a loop and then a square top. The square top has to go up because it's going to go up against the locking block kind of assembly here. The round part is going to go inside the dust cover. Super easy. Just get it in there, lock it in, and bam. I oiled both the spring and the recoil spring guide rod there. The guide rod was a little dry. I think the spring had some sort of grease on it, but just to be safe, the first time you install a part that is dry, you should oil it probably the first couple times and then as needed after that. So we're done with this. Now it's whether I want to do the hammer first or the trigger and the trigger return spring first. I think I'm just going to take the whole thing apart and go from there. And then I'll show you how to put everything back together. Because this is dirty, so I am going to need to clean it. Okay. Did some cleaning. Frames relatively clean now. I've stripped everything out and I've decided I'm going to do the hammer first because a lot easier. So this part is super cake pie way, but you have to worry about the hammer strut, which is nestled nicely in the thigh gap that is that little space with the hammer there. So you're going to take this out. Orientation does not matter. Probably clean that in a second. And come on, buddy. There we go. Pull the hammer out. There's an easier way to do that. I just forgot to do it. Don't need this anymore because I have the Elite Hammer. But I am going to oil this and clean it. Because it's a moving part. Kind of. <laughs> All I'm doing to oil these parts, just in case you haven't seen any of my other install videos, is I have a paper towel that's already oily. And what I do is I'll just roll this in between my fingers with this on there and it'll leave a nice little sheen on there and it's not wet and nasty. All right, so that's ready to go. Next move is fish the new hammer in there. Now you can see I've oiled part of it with the same method that I just oiled that. The hammer strut is in there, so what I have to do now is get the new hammer in there, pop the pin through. This is incredibly easier than any other gun I've worked on. There we go. Hammer's on board. I feel like I have some tension, which is good. Yep. So the hammer strut still works, which is excellent. This is the new hammer spring from Wilson Combat. Now it's hard to see because of the lighting situation I have here. There's a hammer strut in there and you want to put the spring down around the hammer strut, which you can't see, but trust me I did it. Now the last part of this is a pain in the ass. This goes in there. Now the orientation, as so long as it's 180 degrees straight doesn't really matter the spring tension on this is gonna suck that's what is gonna matter also there's no hammer in place so if you need to make any hammer adjustments you're gonna need to push this bad boy here so push down on this there's this bad boy oh geez yeah I can't do this in front of the camera sorry Whew. not a fun time 
So I got it most of the way in there, I'm going to give it a little bit of pressure and push it through. While this is properly aligned, you will not notice any resistance. So the pin will fall straight through, so you want to kind of do it at a 90 degree angle. And there we have it. So now the hammer is installed. And that was actually super cake pie way because sometimes that hammer strut likes to dance around on other guns. Alright, next is the trigger, which is not crazy easy, but not super difficult. This is the new Wilson Combat trigger. I'm going to feed it from above because it's super easy that way. And we're going to align the hole right there and half feed the pin through, which is this guy. Now, there's a little top to this pin. It's almost like a nail, and it goes in this way. Okay? Super easy. So you want to kind of align it and watch it from the top as you put it in there, which I'm doing through the viewfinder, and this is a horrible idea. Okay, I pushed it all the way through on accident, but that is okay because I can back it out using this tiny punch. Just give it a little love. Don't push it all the way out because you got to be able to get that spring in there. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Probably can't see it too well, but down in there is where you got to put trigger return spring. Now the way Wilson did the trigger return spring <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure the orientation's got to be like this. They also did it so you can't screw it up, but it's also not like the sample that I removed. So I got to kind of just deal with it. These are the HKparts.net trigger return spring pliers, which are going to come in really handy here, even though this trigger return spring is larger. Look at how it holds it. Perfect. So you're going to drop it in there. I can't do this in front of the camera. And drop it in there like so, make sure the orientation's right, and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, first part's done. See it on there? Let me zoom in so it's not. Alright, kaboom! Now the difficult part begins. Because I have to put the trigger bar back on, which is what's missing. Oh, geez. Zoomed in. Which is what's missing right here. So we're going to have to do that. This is trigger bar. This is an overly complicated trigger bar spring. The way this interlocks is, this is exactly the orientation it's going to go in. You see this very crude canal here? That's where that spring goes, right in there. So this is kind of a silly idea, but I didn't design the gun. I just work here. So I'm going to oil this just a touch. Not that it really needs it in there, but just for good measure. Clean it up a little bit. So first things first. Going to insert that into there. Like so, so it's now connected. And I'm going to orient this properly. Now there is an ever so tiny hole which this spring has to go into right there and then it goes across the goddamn room. All right, so that was fun. <clears throat> now, where were we? Going to insert pin into the hole. And then... Oh, now it's going to make me choose. Oh, we got it now. Cooking with gas. Look at that. America. Now the next thing is to get this leg over 
that little strut. Now I'm going to tell you from experience, I won't be able to get this on camera. Alright, let me explain what I just did. So I uninstalled that spring one more again and put the trigger bar through the frame up there and then pushed the spring in diagonally and then pushed the trigger pin through to capture the trigger return spring. So you can lose it that way across the room and don't ask me how I know that, but it's all together now. It's easier than the USP 45, but you have to be really attentive or you're going to lose springs across the room. That said, now it's time to put this bad boy back together. Right here. Ahem. It's very important to make sure the spring is where it's supposed to be in the first place. Not be a genius like me. Okay, so it's all fed in there. Up and over and in. There you go. Okay. I'm going to put the grips back on because that's the last part. Put it back together and see how it works. Alright, with the grips tightened, which I think they are. Yeah, good to go. Put the slide back on. And it works. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Very happy with it. You'll see some of my paint jobs didn't go so well. <laughs> But, very nice, very, very nice. Now, what I will say is, you can hear how smooth it is, but I'm not sure if that's the spring and the guide or the recoil buffer making that additional sound, that dragging. That sound, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Let's see how the hammer cocks. That's not bad. I like it. Very nice. Very, very nice. I like the trigger too. The trigger's in a much more advantageous position, both for double action and single action. Now, what I just did, did absolutely nothing to change the reset itself. I think that would probably have to do with adjustments to the trigger bar, but I'm not 100% on that. But overall, The trigger pull is definitely better. I'm not 100% sure how much was shaved, but I also don't mind the stock poundage. So if the change from, say, the stock, if it's 16 pounds to 14 pounds is just an ever so slight adjustment in the overall feel and smoothness, I'm completely fine with that. I don't need a three pound Beretta single action trigger. But what I will say is, so far, very happy with these Wilson parts.